and hello and good evening hockey fans welcome back in to another episode of the neutral zone here on ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports i am your host adam Kernick. zach puplis is going to be off tonight but that's okay we have got a ton lined up for you on tonight's episode the west has been clinched for the first time in 21 years. The Colorado Avalanche are headed back to the Stanley Cup Final. We will break down that game four from last night, plus the series as a whole. Take a look at how the Avalanche are going to be spending their next few days while they wait for the Lightning and the Rangers to finish things up but in their series game five their game four is going on right now as we speak we will check in and do some live look-ins there also later on we're going to have Pierre Moss of the show that never sleeps podcast here on IE Sports Radio he's going to stop by in about 20 minutes or so to give us a Rangers perspective on all things going on in the playoffs Plus some other news and notes from all around the hockey world. We had another coaching vacancy come up this past week. Plus some stuff happening out in the desert. The Arizona Coyotes have plans for a new stadium, a new rink, and an Oilers sweater that came on the market that brought in a ton of money. All that and more here on this episode of The Neutral Zone. Let's go. And once again, everyone, welcome on in to the Neutral Zone. I am your host, Adam Karnick. Going to be just me flying solo here tonight on the show. Zach Puplis has got the night off. He's got some some obligations for a theater show that he's working on, that they're finishing up rehearsals and things like that. So he's a bit detained this evening but that's okay we're going to keep you occupied we're going to break down everything that went on in the western conference championship last night take a look at game four tonight all kinds of fun our usual brand of hockey humor sports all those fun things we're all here for you and without further ado of course we do need to acknowledge our sponsors here at the radio station the Southern California Warriors semi-pro football team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get filmed to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. Find them on Twitter at SoCal Warriors, Instagram at Southern California underscore Warriors, or by going to Facebook and just searching Southern California Warriors. And IE Sports Radio is available for you on Twitter at IE Sports Radio, Instagram at IE Sports Radio, Facebook search IE Sports Radio, or head over to our website IESportsRadio.com. For the last eight years, IE Sports Radio has been bringing you amazing content, ranging from interviewing legendary athletes to building tailor made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. All the while, we've continued to be by the fans for the fans. And with your help, we're ready to take the next step. When you go to our website, iesportsradio.com, you'll see our Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starts at just $5 a month. This donation gets you shout outs on all of our shows. Higher tiers include IE Sports Radio merchandise, access to our podcasting university, and even a chance to be featured on a segment of our flagship show, The Defining Moment. Thank you all very much for continuing to make IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. Want to shout out our Patreon supporters right now? Bay Area Raised, Emlos Great, Key to the Gate, and our anonymous supporter. Thank you very much for continuing to show your support for IE Sports Radio. We could not continue to do what we do without your help. We really do appreciate it. 
And do want to give a shout out also to our fan of the month, Justin Ekstrom from Minnesota. You can find him at the Sports Crib 21 on Twitter, talking all things Minnesota sports over there. Unfortunately, the Wild got knocked out in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I had higher hopes for them. I expected them to at least make the second round, maybe even give Colorado a run for its money. Alas, it was not meant to be. And then ways you can interact with this show. Of course, we are available for you on Twitter at IESR Neutral Zone. Or if you want to follow me personally, I am at Adam underscore Karnick. And of course, if you are listening live here tonight on Tuesday, June 6th, of course, you can hop on into the chat room. I see Taryn is there for a little bit. Uh, hello, Taryn. He likes the uh, the title for our episode this week. Yeah, it's been used a million times. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie, isn't it? Uh, he's gonna be he's gonna be listening in and out tonight. I know he's got uh, he's got some plans this evening as well. But hop on into the chat room. We can interact that way. Have some fun there. Or if you just want to sit back and let me entertain you tonight, I am here for that in whatever way works best for you. So let's start with last night, the Colorado Avalanche for the first time in 21 years clinch the Campbell Bowl and earn their berth into the Stanley Cup final. Crazy game, much like the series, a crazy, crazy game. Back and forth, if you at all, this is one of the great things about I, playoffs in general, one thing I think that gets overplayed, one card I think that gets overplayed by analysts and broadcasters and, and fans alike, we all love our sports. We all say, oh man, there's no playoffs like our sports playoffs. That happens in hockey. You know, you hear people all the time, there's no, there's just no drama like playoff hockey. They're all unique. They're all different. They're all good. Last night was good. My goodness. If you at all are a fan of one of those two teams last night, you had to just be on the edge of your seat. Six goals in the third period. Edmonton had two different two-goal leads let slip by, and you could see the frustration, especially on Edmonton goalie Mike Smith. Anytime Colorado scored, you just you could see the pent up frustration there from Edmonton goalie Mike Smith. They knew they had to have that game last night, and they just couldn't get it. They just absolutely two separate two goal leads weren't enough. You know, you go into the third period, you're up three one. You want to be able to lock that down and and hold down that win. And unfortunately, Edmonton just Edmonton just couldn't do it. Kudos to the Avalanche though for also not looking at it and saying, well, we're down, you know, we're down by two going into the third. We're up 3-0. We can live to fight another day. It'll be more fun to win, you know, to, to clinch the conference at home in game five anyway. They stayed with it. They hung with it and got paid off very, very, very well. Three unanswered goals in the third period, you had Landeskog, McKinnon, and Rantanen all scoring. McKinnon and McKinnon and Rantanen were both within basically a minute and a half of each other late in the third. You could feel the energy dip out of Edmonton, out of the whole building, when when Rantanen got his goal. On the when con, he converted that power play, and all of a sudden, now it's now it's a Colorado lead. But give the Oilers credit; they didn't give up. They definitely kicked it into a high gear. They definitely started playing with a bit more reckless abandon. Understandably, you know, you, you lose that game, you're eliminated. But they got it to force overtime only to wind up with Arturi Lankinen. Arturi Lankinen with that goal last night, which he did a beautiful job on that goal too. 
Kale Marker, who who wound up getting the primary assist on that goal, did what did what you're supposed to do in that situation. Just throw the puck at the net. You know, when in doubt, throw the puck at the net. Good things will happen. But Lankinen deflected his teammate's shot just enough so that it threw off Mike Smith and it wound up with a, a, an empty cage, an easy empty cage goal. Arturi Lankin and now he's he gets to go into the NHL history books. Lankin was a an acquisition at the trade deadline. He came over from the Montreal Canadiens who as you may recall, we're in the cup final last year. So Lincoln and now back-to-back years, he's in the Stanley Cup final playing for two different teams. But that's not what makes him unique. And that's not what puts him in the history books. Lankanen also scored, it, you can't call it the conference final because it it was covid and they were realignment so we're we're just going to you know they didn't know they didn't award the Campbell Bowl or the Prince of Wales trophy last season for anybody so for simplicity's sake I'm just going to refer to it as the semifinal Lankinen scored the semifinal clinching goal for Montreal last year in game 6 scored the goal that directly put the Canadians into the Stanley Cup final in game six a year ago. That was also in overtime. So with him scoring that goal last night, game four, Western Conference final in overtime, Lankinen becomes just the second player in NHL history to score the overtime winning goal that directly puts his team into the Stanley Cup final. The first guy to do it, Gordy Drillen, way back in 1939. 83 years ago. That's some neat history. That's some really neat history there that Arturi Lankinen gets to now be part of in Stanley Cup history. Colorado, of course, did did not pick up the cup. Uh, Zach and I were talking about this earlier today. I figured it'd be a good idea for those that need a refresher as to why teams don't pick up the conference championship cups. That's... Hockey superstition. The superstition goes like this, that you're only ever going to get to pick up one cup in any season. So if you pick up that conference championship cup, then you're not going to get the chance to pick up the Stanley Cup at the end of the next round. So not every team adheres to it. The Pittsburgh Penguins, of course, were infamous under Sidney Crosby that they would just, nah, they'd pick up the Prince of Wales trophy and and skate around with it, and they won a title. So, but it is kind of tradition that you you leave the conference, whether it be the Campbell Bowl or the Prince of Wales Trophy, you kind of leave it on the table, let your picture be taken with it, but you don't touch it. Kind of tradition at this point. Very superstitious. You know, we all know how hockey players, how hockey people have their their superstitions, and this is just one of them. A fun one. A silly, as most superstitions are, very silly, but tradition behind them, okay. So the avalanche touched the bowl, but they did not pick it up. They left it on the table. So for those keeping score of such things. But now for Colorado, I mean, you you look overall at where they were this season. Looking at the overall, overall standings of the season, of course, they clinched. So darn early, 119 points in the Central Division. Second second in the President's Trophy running for best regular season record, basically. 
best record in the Western Conference. They now get to anxiously await the winner of the Rangers and the Lightning. Either way, Colorado's going to have home ice. They're going to be home for this series. So they now get to fly back to Denver and, and sit and wait and have and just await their, their next fate. We'll see. Maybe, maybe that means Kadri will get a chance to play in this series. We don't know. Obviously, he got hurt. Took a brutal shot from Evander Kane. We'll see if Kadri's going to be able to return for for the Stanley Cup final. Um, we'll see if Andrew Cogliano, he got injured last night for Colorado. We'll see if he'll be able to play. And of course, Darcy Kemper, the state of Colorado's goalie, we'll see if he's going to be recovered, I I expect that Kemper should be good to go. Um, I've not anyway. I've not heard that he's been ruled out of of any conversations for the Stanley Cup. So if if somebody's heard differently, please do let me know. But I have not seen or read that or heard that that uh, that Darcy Kemper would be ruled out. Uh, they they went with with. Uh, their backup. They went with their backup last night. Um, and coming off of coming off of a shutout in Game Three, that made sense to do to to let him be out there, let uh, let Francouz be out there. He certainly earned it. Didn't have the best game last night, but got the win. Did well enough to get the win, and there in the Stanley Cup Final, I would expect Darcy Kemper to be back. And that's going to be big. But now for Colorado, once again, just like we saw at the end of the first round, they now get to sit back and wait. You know, they're they're 11 and they're what now? 12 and 2 in these playoffs. Two sweeps and then St. Louis managed to take two games against them. You know, they've only had, only had one series where they've lost a game. So now you're, you're Colorado. You get to just kind of sit back and, and wait and let this play out. Right now, the the Rangers, of course, they've got their 2-1 lead in the series right now. But Tampa Bay is leading one to nothing. Just about we're just under 12 minutes to go in the second period. The Rangers are out shooting the Lightning 14 to 10, but the Lightning have had the one go in. Pat Maroon with the lone goal so far tonight. Obviously, if you're Colorado, keep playing, boys. Keep playing. Go six. Go seven. Just let this go. We'll we'll kick back. We'll relax. We get more time to sit back and watch and and study tape. So obviously, if you're if you're Colorado, you're wanting this to go as late as you can. But the Colorado Av- Avalanche, congratulations to them. It will be very interesting to see how this how this plays out. All right. We are going to take our first quick break of the night. And then when we come back, we're going to talk some Lightning and Rangers. We're going to switch gears and move over to the East. And specifically, we're going to look at kind of these Cinderella playoffs that the Rangers are having. Pierre Moss of the Show That Never Sleeps podcast covering all things New York sports. He, I know he is watching the Rangers game right now. He's agreed to hop on for a few minutes, and we're going to talk all things Rangers. This is the Neutral Zone on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm Adam Kernick. We'll be right back after this. Hey, what's up, sports fans? You're looking for a different type of sports talk show, something you haven't heard before got to check out the BS3 Sports Show every other Saturday on 2 Live Stews Radio, 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Sports talk at its finest. Always have great guests playing some good hip-hop. You don't want to miss it. Make sure to tune in to the BS3 Sports Show every other Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. What's happening, sports fans? 
Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. going on everybody my name is harrison glazer and we're coming at you from the show that never sleeps podcast i cover the jets the islanders the nets and the yankees this is fear most and i cover the mets knicks rangers and the giants our show is live every wednesday through spreaker and a bunch of other ways to get our content Again, we're the show that never sleeps podcast. We talk about all those New York sports. It's a lot of fun. We get into all of it. Please tune in. Again, that's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we look forward to having you guys right here on United Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Each morning with list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day. Then you just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the college, and everything in between. This is me, your brother, Larry B. of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world, sports themselves, and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for The Defining Moment with me, your boy, Larry B. every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there. your boy, Marcus Los Great, here to give you what you want, here to give you what you need, yeah man, yeah, (laughs) I'm coming to you live, straight from your mama's basement with a crispy, white tea, They are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome back into the neutral zone here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Joining the program now, you have heard him on the show that never sleeps podcast every Wednesday, talking all things New York sports with his co-host Harrison Glazer. He is Pierre Moss. Pierre, how are we doing tonight, my man? Doing good. Doing good, Adam. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm keeping an 
eye on the Rangers a little bit while doing the show tonight. How are you feeling with the Rangers? I am shocked that here we are in the Eastern Conference Finals, and here they are. I'll be honest, I kind of figured they'd be out in the first round. Well, I mean, coming into the season, it definitely was not expected that they'll be where they are now. I mean, I mean, really with this run, in my personal opinion, I think they're at least a year or two ahead of schedule. Considering how young this team is, it's the youngest team in the playoffs. I mean, so many 20 something and Vachano and Hazel are getting into it as we speak. Um, very, very good trade acquisition, by the way, as a trade down by uh, Chris Jury. One of many um, good acquisitions that uh, Chris Jury made, including Tyra Mott and um, Andrew Cox. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's wonderful to see the Rangers on this run and the two wins away from, from playing for the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, I mean, when Zach and I talked – when we were doing our season previews, we were a lot more focused on the Islanders than we were the Rangers coming into this season. And here the Rangers are in the Eastern Conference final and the Islanders are firing their head coach and bringing in new people and trying to start over from scratch. Yeah, I mean, the Islanders definitely had a rough start of uh, this season. Never really quite recovered from that, but then again, they were opening up a new building as well, so that definitely contributed to it. And, yeah, I mean, it makes sense why um, the Islanders were getting all the attention um, before the season. I mean, they, they, they've they made um, quite a few um, playoff runs, nearly get to the Cup final in each of the last two seasons. So, yeah, that, that makes sense why the focus would be on there and not so much the Rangers. But, again, it's just going to show you um, when you have a group that buys in to what the coach is telling them to do. And when you end up getting great, great goals in from the circuit, your team can go anywhere. Your team can go very far. And that's why the Rangers are where they are now. Yeah, and goaltending especially. Goalie is that position in hockey. It's, it's, it's the quarterback of the hockey world. If you have a good goalie, you can – you can go anywhere in the playoffs. Shesterkin, of course, he's a Vezina Trophy finalist. He's honestly, he's my pick for the Vezina. Zach and I broke that down a few weeks ago. I think we both went with Shesterkin, but still, I am amazed that here with Shesterkin and Kreider and Fox and with as young as they are, getting two game sevens out of the way. And then jumping out in a lead in this series. What has this playoff ride been like for you? Not only a Rangers follower for for the podcast, but a Rangers fan. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, they haven't been on a run like this really since 2015. And that great core group of McDonough and others. Um, it's wonderful to see. And really, when you're a young guy, you don't know what you don't know. So, I think game seven, I think they may able to rise to the occasion because, again, they don't know any better. <laughs> I mean, they don't know any better. And, really, you can use that to your advantage, the fact that you don't know any better. Yeah, there's definitely something to be said for that. Yeah, that that too young to know any different. I'm, uh, I'm a Cubs fan and baseball, and I remember when they won the World Series a few years back – when they were in the National League Division Series, they pointed out that when they were having such success against the Dodgers, that it was, well, yeah, of course, this hitter just hit a home run off of Clayton Kershaw. He doesn't. He's too young and dumb to know any different. He doesn't realize he's supposed to be intimidated by this guy. So what were, what were the games set like? Let's go back around. Let's go back to the Carolina round for a second because obviously that's you're down 3-1, 3-1, 3-2 for sure in that series and you're you've got to here. Yeah. And so you've got to win in Carol you've got to not only win at your place but then go and win in Carolina. 
Yeah, I mean, it was definitely tough to be honest. But looking at that game, seven Carolina, I felt really good going to that game. That as long as Rangers play their game, uh, they can um, come out with a win. And once they got to nothing, I said to myself, "This game is over. They're not going to beat your circuit when they need to." And sure enough, they didn't. In fact, they didn't score until it was four nothing. And by then, it was way too late. So, yeah, I mean, I I felt very confident going to that game seven, even though it was on the road. And unfortunately, Kucherov just scored for uh, Tampa. So now they're up to nothing with 649 left to go in the second period. Yeah, I was just going to say, speaking of going up 2 nothing, Tampa Bay is now up 2 nothing. Nikita Kucherov with the, with the goal there. So 2 nothing Lightning. So what's... Why why aren't things going well tonight for the Rangers? What specifically is is going on? Unfortunately, I'm while well, I'm keeping up with it, I'm not watching it yet. Give us a breakdown here. What's going on tonight for the Rangers? They're out shooting Tampa Bay. They're out shooting Tampa Bay, but they're not they're not putting up past Vasilevsky. And um honestly, I don't think they use their speed enough. They've done it at times. But I don't think he's just speed enough. And, and and honestly, they gotta find a way to put a body on the reset. They gotta find a way to get more physical with that guy. You don't want him coming alive. He started to come alive last game and he's got a goal tonight. So you gotta find a way to put a body on the reset. Yeah, and Chris Kreider's got to get comfortable in front of Vasilevsky, doesn't he? Just become that that human screen to be able to get some loose change and and rebounds, doesn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's why he scored so many goals all season. That's why he scored two goals during the regular season by doing exactly that. Yeah, it's that. It's that that whole screen mentality, and it's it's tough to set up right in front of the crease because you know you're going to get hit a lot. But if you can do it, and Kreider was so good at it in the regular season, he's I don't want to say he's had a bad playoffs because he hasn't. He hasn't had a bad playoffs, but he's had stretches where he's kind of disappeared. What are you, what are you thinking about Kreider's postseason as a whole? The, so far this off se- this postseason, I should say. I think he's been fine. I mean, yes, there have been periods where he hasn't scored um, the, the amount of goals you would like. But, um, again, um, he's been fine. He's been fine. And the biggest thing he's done is provide leadership for a very young team. That's the biggest thing he's done in my mind. Yeah, that, that – Presence and leadership is is always big. All right. I know that the team, even, even if New York comes back and wins this game tonight and go 3-1, nobody on the team will say anything other than we're focused 100% on the lightning. We can take ourselves back for a moment. We can allow ourselves to step back. Let's Let's allow ourselves here for a minute. Let's say New York wins this series. Colorado just clinched the West last night. How would you feel? How do you feel going into a series potentially with Colorado for the with the cup on the line? I feel very good, and for one reason, one reason only, he was the circuit. Yeah, he's clearly the better goal. He's clearly the better goal and would be the best goal in that series in the range of getting it. I feel very good. I I feel very good going to that series. Hey, that's the most important piece to have in any playoff series is to if you have the better goalie, you know that you're going to be in the series for sure. You're not going to get you're not going to get blown out. We've seen some crazy scores in these playoffs. I mean, nine to six, eight to six. Six to five last night in overtime. Yeah, that was fun last night. That was fun. Oh, just it's it's certainly not your father's or your grandfather's NHL. But then at the same time, when we look at 
some of the scores in the East, they haven't quite been as high scoring, as crazy and ridiculous. If it gets into a shootout, do the Rangers have the ability to keep up? They certainly do. They certainly do. And um, they've got just as much speed as Kyle Arles does. To be honest, they got they got just as much speed as Kyle Arles does. All right. So, so Kreider and Panarin and those other guys, if it gets into a shootout, bring it on. We're right there with you. Absolutely. All right. I like I like hearing that. Not that I don't mind goalie matchups. I I like goalie matchups. I like defense too. But these playoffs have been fun. When you know you get six goals in a period, there is something exciting about all that. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Well, Pierre Moss, thank you so very much for hopping on and giving us a little bit of a Rangers perspective, taking some time out of the game for us. Remind everybody how can they how can they find you? How can they follow you? Well, you can follow me at Skywalker Sports Eight One One on Twitter. Um, you can also um, follow us at the High Sports Radio, our show at Show NVR Sleeps at IE. You can follow us there, and um, you can also follow us at Sports Radio on Twitter at W Sports Radio. All right. He is Pierre Moss. He is half of the show that never sleeps podcast on IE Sports Radio. Pierre, thank you so much for hopping on tonight, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. We'll catch you later. That is Pierre Moss, the show that never sleeps podcast here on IE Sports Radio. We are going to take one more quick break before we get out of here tonight. Got some news and notes from around the NHL world. Some serious some kind of crazy how much I know that all sports paraphernalia, especially if it, the more authentic it is, the more expensive it gets. How much would you ever pay for a game worn sweater? We'll talk about that and some other things before we get out of here tonight. I am Adam Karnick. This is the neutral zone on IE sports radio, your direct feed for all that is sports right back after this. Hey, USRN fans, do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. The most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris.
Hey, sports fans. Do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all, and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What is going on, everybody? This is Ben Matello, the host of the Yinza Report, right here on IU Sports Radio. I'm bringing you the latest in the Steel City, the City of Champions, from the Steelers, the Penguins, the Pirates, as well as the college game with both Penn State and Pitt. You can join me every Tuesday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, right here on IU Sports Radio, where I'll be talking about everything from the Steel City, the City of Champions, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, Natalia's Lock. And we're the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys should definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That give you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. Welcome back into the Neutral Zone on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am Adam Karnick. One last segment that we're going to do here tonight before we make room for Kale Henderson and Sin City Sports out in Las Vegas. Talking all things Vegas sports. I imagine that he will be talking a lot about the Aces and the Raiders and maybe some Golden Knights talk tonight. We'll see. So wanted to wrap up a couple of things from the Oilers Colorado series from last night. Kind of focus a little bit more on the Edmonton side, of course. A couple of key players now that the seas that their season is done could be on their way out. We could this could be all we have seen from Mike Smith and from Evander Kane. Mike Smith, um, you may have seen, I've started doing 
uh, a lot of our shows here on IE Sports Radio have started doing some videos throughout the week uh, to to you know just a different a different way to try and engage with the audience. We put them out there on our on our Twitter handles. Again, uh, IE SR Neutral Zone is is this show or IE Sports Radio. Of course, gets all of them. They all get retweeted by the main account. Or you can follow me at Adam underscore Karnick. I retweet them as well. And I talked about how, after the first game with the Oilers and the Avalanche, how Mike Smith, to me, felt like, and I've talked about it here on the show, how I feel like Mike Smith is a weak link for the Oilers. He's 40 years old. He's got one year left on his deal. However, he could retire they could decide to move on from him. Um, Edmonton's not great against the cap, so I'm not sure how feasible that necessarily is. But if he were to retire, you know, then then they could play around with it a little bit. You can look at moving the contract. There's always teams that Arizona that are looking to to pick up money just so they can have it on their books. Um, so there's ways to work around that if he indeed decides to retire. I feel, and we're going to get into this in a, in a later, once we get past the Stanley Cup Finals, Zach and I are going to do kind of a wrap-up, a couple of weeks of wrap-up on the season, and we're going to be asking questions of each team. And my question, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do for Edmonton already. It's going to be, how are you going to improve your back end? You know, your defense and your net mining. You've got to do something there. Mike Smith wasn't, he wasn't awful. I I give him more grief than he probably deserves. He he ultimately he had some decent numbers in the playoffs, but you never felt like going into a series like Mike Smith was the better goalie. And we just talked with Pierre there, you know, his feeling going into the if the Rangers were to survive this series with with the Lightning and checking in again with the score real quick, uh, it is still two nothing Lightning. We're we're just about at the end of the second period, just about the second intermission. He feels confident going into a series with Colorado because they've got Igor Shistakin there in net. That's the feeling you've got to have if you're a playoff caliber team that, hey, we can stick with anybody because we've got a great goaltender. We've got a great netminder. And that's not the case you feel with Edmonton. With Edmonton, you feel like, hey, we're just going to, we're just going to outscore you. We're going to try to turn this into a marathon. You know, we're going to, we're going to try to just turn this into a sprint and challenge you to keep up. And that got them through the first two rounds, and then they ran into Colorado, a team that not only could keep up, but had enough goaltending in play that they could slow Edmonton down a little bit. The other guy that they could be down was a guy that did not play in Game 4, Evander Kane. Evander Kane is a very polarizing guy. When Edmonton signed Evander Kane, I'll admit they came down on my charts a little bit, not because Evander Kane isn't a talented hockey player. He very clearly, he had 13 goals in the postseason and was a a huge reason why they advanced as far as they did. The dude is also... I want to choose my words carefully here. He's not a good dude. On the ice or off. Um, allegations with his with his ex-wife in the offseason ultimately led to him leaving the San Jose Sharks. He faked his vaccination status. Um, you know, then the, the hit on Kadri. You know, hockey reasons. The hit on Kadri there that took Nazem Kadri out of out of the game, out of the series. Potentially, he he may be done for the season. You know, things like that seem to happen with this guy. But he's thirty years old and he can score. I would not be surprised if Edmonton brings me back, uh, brings me back, brings him back. 
I would also not be surprised if they decided to let him go. Uh, Kane himself mentioned that he would be okay coming back. Uh, you know that he enjoyed his time there in Edmonton, but he's going to you know mull over his options. Thirty nine points in forty three games with the Oilers. Obviously, he had success. Um, some success there for sure. So it'd be an interesting situation to, to keep an eye on throughout the rest of the, of the off season as we move into off season mode here before we know it. Um, some other news from around the league, the Boston Bruins, uh, have fired their head coach, Bruce Cassidy, um, they did qualify for the playoffs every year under Cassidy. They they got knocked out in the first round this year, of course, to Carolina. Cassidy finishes with a record of 245, 108, and 46, but it was just 36 and 37 in the playoffs. Uh, they made the Stanley Cup final, of course, a couple of years a couple of years back, losing in that one to the to the Blues. Um Don Sweeney said it was a very difficult decision. Uh, quote, I met with Bruce in the afternoon, both professionally and personally. I want to thank he and his family, Julian Cole and Shannon, for what they've done both on and off the ice for the Boston Bruins organization. A really tough day overall, but I had to make a decision that I felt was in the best interest of where our team is where is at now and moving forward. So, uh, talked to some players. They were okay with it. So, the Boston Bruins are... Looking for a new coach, so another another coach enters the the vacancy, and we will we will see where that goes. And we've got to sound the horn because Kale Henderson and Sin City Sports are coming up right after us, so we want to make sure we we give him enough time. Do want to bring up though the Arizona Coyotes? Of course, they are very famously going to be playing at Arizona State University next season. They released plans this past week for a privately funded stadium and surrounding area that they're trying to get built in the Tempe area of Arizona. I was talking with the guys who do Valley Sports for us covering covering Arizona here on IE Sports Radio. They were excited. They were very excited for it. I uh, think it's going to be a great location, great locale. If you watch the video, they're very cool plans uh, to have a kind of a, a a rink length replay monitor right above the, the ice. It kind of creates a mirrored effect for watching the game. It, it looks cool in theory. be interesting to see how the plans work in general. Everything's got to be better than playing in a college rink. So it'll be interesting to see how those plans unfold. I did uh, tease a story that obviously we're going to have to uh, settle that next week. Until then, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to our sponsors, Southern California Warriors. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, Emlos Great, Bay Area Raised, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you for supporting us on Twitter. Thank you to Larry B. and everything he does here at the station. He and his new wife, I saw there out at a minor league baseball game tonight. I hope they're having fun. Thank you to Taryn for chopping in, hopping into the chat room with us. Thank you again to Pierre Moss of the Show That Never Sleeps podcast for hopping on and talking some Rangers with us. Lightning are up two to nothing at the second intermission here in game four. So if that holds, we'll be looking for at least six games in the Eastern Conference. Lots to keep up with. We will be back next week. Uh, Hopefully, Zach will be with us. I will be back from a a quick vacation, so I'll be all over the place. Until then, everybody have a great week. Stay out of the boards. Definitely stay out of the penalty box. We will talk next time.